All right, today we're going to learn some HECRAS modeling for real river systems. In the previous videos, I showed you how to do it for basically some hypothetical scenarios of scanner cross sections. Right now, we're going to focus on a real river system for which you do need to use ArcGIS. If you're going to use ArcGIS Pro, which is wonderful, you have access to it for free through San Diego State University. Or if you're uh, affiliated with other institutions, I'm sure uh, you can access either the Pro version or the basic uh, desktop version. So let's get things started. I'm showing San Diego area as an example. Of course, you have some basic GIS layers. You have heel shade uh, that can show the topography or you have also the actual world topographic maps. But the elevation data in ArcGIS is mostly for visualizations and we need to obtain high quality elevation data so we can extract the elevation station information uh, directly from the uh, digital elevation models. Uh, we don't want to create hundreds and thousands of station elevation data for a natural river cross section, which has many, many features. So to do that, of course, uh, you want to access uh, your local data sets. For San Diego, we are fortunate to have the SANDAC database, which is an online server. So in your connection under insert, you add this server, you basically create a new ArcGIS server in this, and the link for Sandag, I'm also providing it as a comment in this uh, video comment section. It's this link, uh, San Diego Association of Governments, and they have data sets, uh, no user or password needed, just okay it. And then you see under server, this pops up. So this is San Diego, and you open it bunch of information is available here. Census data, elevation data is what we want to use today. Anything you can imagine, any imagery, any land uses, any parkings, anything related to transportation, uh, all the highway lines, bike lines, uh, anything you can just think about that could exist for GIS data like railroads. So let's get back to the elevation data, which is the focus for today's work. Elevation, we have the regional dam. We have uh, also 2014 version of it. Let's just uh, bring the regional one. You can see the elevation data for the entire county of San Diego is available. And they have different versions if you want to compare. Uh, they also have the Western version. Which doesn't seem to be functional at this point. So uh, we can just use the, uh, it actually might need time for loading. So uh, we need to be a little patient when we're working uh, with data from online resources. So one layer, uh, actually the top layer is contours. We're not going to use that. We're going to use the actual digital elevation models. And it's loading, as you can see, it's, it's a heavy file, it takes time. So we can turn that off for now and, and focus on the area that we want to do some modeling. So for today's presentation, I am doing this for uh, this open channel, discharging to this pond before entering the San Diego River. So I have a limiter on my heel shade so I can see what's happening. Yes, there is an open channel here, as you can see. Uh, I can turn off this. So this open channel goes to the pond. So what I need is definitely cutting some cross sections and understand the shape of open channel using the digital elevation model. For that, 
uh, I have the entire DEM file, which is a huge, huge file. I just need to clip a portion of it. And uh, that's an easy thing. Uh, if you're using geoprocessing tools, you can definitely import your layer. So let me remove the contours that we're not using. Let me turn this on. It's a good idea to save your workbook so you don't lose any data. You drag and drop this. Here. So you have San Diego Regional DEM, but you need to define the extent of the clipping. So uh, right now, I don't have the extent, so maybe it's a good idea for me to just draw a polygon and then clip using the, this polygon. Or you can put the uh, latitude and longitude, but that's an overkill. It's easier, so you draw a simple polygon and then put it here as their extent. So you need to go to your catalog and find uh, where uh, your project file is saved. My project file is saved under this, uh, project HECRAS. So under HECRAS, I have um, this for my test and then this folder for GIS work. Then I, of course, I can create a new shape file. And just uh, for name, I just want to say clip boundary it's a good idea to avoid space so underline here it's a polygon and you can leave uh, others as default the california 6 is what we're going to use for coordinate system california 6 And that's under NAD 1983-2011 version is up to date, so California 6. Uh, so the reason I typed here, because if I remove this, you're going, to, you're going to see thousands of project system for the entire world. So you just narrow it down to California 6. That's the most appropriate for San Diego. Uh, uh, geographic system and then you okay it or you can always favorite this so you don't need to search every time and then I okay so I can just uh, go ahead and draw this now So now I can edit this. Um, to be able to create some So I want to basically draw a polygon from here to here. Some part of the pond maybe to here and to here. So that's my polygon. You can now save this and save all edits yes all right now that you have this boundary for clipping you can go ahead and do the clipping so under geo, geo processing tab uh, type clip and it's going to show you a bunch of options 
what you're doing here is just clipping a raster. So that's the one you should pick. Of course, uh, you want to first bring this big guy for the entire county. You can see it's a massive extent. You don't need the whole part of it. Your boundary can easily drag and drop. So this is being updated. Uh, just save it. Uh, it's uh, giving you option to save it in your project folder under the geo database that you have, the GD file. So leave it as is, and then you can extract out of it later to save it to whatever folder you want. So I'm just running this. It takes some time reading data from cloud and do the clipping and save it. So it's done. And you can see, yes, it makes sense. It's giving you elevation. You can see there is a channel, there is a part of the pound. So you can model this part and see how it's going to function for you. And uh, this is still is saved in the Geo database. It's not the best format for the Hecra software. We need to do some uh, post-processing. And that post-processing is basically, we need to convert this to TIFF. To convert this to TIFF, uh, there are multiple approaches. The easiest one is that you basically, you have this DEM on your Geo database already saved and showing in your work session. So just click right-click data and export raster. So this window comes up, it asks you, uh where you want to save this now you can choose any folder you want this is being now outside you can pick your desktop folder or whatever just to uh, this pc i'm saving on my desktop and pick a name for it i want to call it valeta street is the address uh, for this dot tiff And this is the right state plane projection, California 6. And uh, then no transformation needed. You can leave the cell size. This is a 2.5 by 2.5 feet database uh, created by the county of San Diego, Sandag. And then this is your output format. You can create JPG, whatever you want. But TIFF is the most uh, uh, suitable with HECRAS. So this part is easy, you just click export and it's done. So you see your TIFF now created. So this is the file that you now you can import it to HGRAS and then you can cut your cross sections for the river and everything. And you can uh, go to the desktop the folder, like this is the folder like I chose. I have everything in this, uh, all the files are created so I can now easily uh, export things to HECRAS. So your work with RGIS is done at this point. Now let's open the HECRAS window and import the TIFF file for elevation and start cutting the cross sections.